Hello again, Year 11. This video is looking at graphs of the tangent function. Graphs of the tangent function. So it goes with exercise 14L from your text. Okay, and as always, we start with the unit circle. So uh, we've got this particular one here where we've got our angle here in the first quadrant. There's also an angle here in the second. Okay, but there's an angle here in the first quadrant. And you can see that the value for tangent here is very clearly shown. Now, the one that's drawn in, this happens to be a 45 degree angle. Um, and the tangent of 45 is actually 1, matches the radius. But that's um, it's just a feature of the geometry. Okay, because if that's 45, that's 1, that's 1, and that's root 2. Okay. But looking at the tangent function, what I want you to appreciate is that when the angle equals 0, tangent equals 0, and as the angle increases from 0 to 90, when just before you get to 90, you've got a very, very big value for tangent, okay? Because as this angle increases, this length gets longer, and, it, and you can appreciate that when this angle is like 89.9 .9 degrees or something, then this value for tangent is very, very big because it takes a long time for those two lines to converge. And when the angle becomes 90 degrees, the tangent becomes undefined. Okay, the tangent becomes undefined at 90 degrees or pi on 2 because the two lines are parallel, so they don't intersect. Then what happens when you flip around past 90 degrees is that the tangent suddenly flips to a very, very big negative value because you come all the way down here to get your tangent. Okay, and then the tangent being, goes from being a very, very big negative value. And as you come around the circle here, the, the, the magnitude, if you like, of the negative value gets smaller. It becomes a smaller and smaller negative value until you get round to here, where the tangent is zero again. So it starts at zero, goes positive, gets very, very, very big, gets undefined there, it becomes infinite, and then starts at a very, very big negative number, and keeps coming around and goes to zero again. And then in the bottom half of the circle, the process repeats. So the period of the tan graph is actually pi. It's half a circle, not a whole circle. So what does this actually look like when you graph it? It looks like this. Okay. Now, here, that's zero. That's where we're starting at zero. And as you're going around, the value for tan, here, that's 45 degrees or pi when the angle is pi on 2, uh, sorry, pi on 4, that's when the angle is pi on 4. At pi on 4, it's 1, okay, that's your 45 degree triangle there. And then as you go around, it gets bigger and bigger. And there's an arrow here to say, well, that keeps going. And what we have here is we have an asymptote at 90 degrees or pi on 2 because it doesn't actually touch this because it's undefined at pi on 2. So that's why there's an asymptote there. Okay, so this goes all the way up and this goes almost infinite. Well, it goes infinitely, really, in that direction. And we pick it up again here because once you go past 90 degrees, you have a very, very big negative value. Okay, and then there's the equivalent angle there in the second quadrant. Okay. And then we come back to pi. So one period of the tan graph is from there to there. Okay. What we end up with there is we end up with a re with a repetition because here we're going around the circle again. So that's two pi there. So the tan graph actually looks. It starts when you start at zero. You have that. You have that half. Then you have that whole cycle there, and you have that half. So this graph between 0 and 2 pi represents two periods of the tan graph, okay, because it's two half circles. The period of the tan graph is a half circle. Okay, um, And this is the, the basic tan graph, tangent graph, and it's the basic shape. Right? We don't tend to, this is not a graph that's used as often as sine graphs and cos graphs because there's not as many applications for it. Uh, this is just another copy of this, so I'll leave this one later. Okay. Now, the way we construct this 
for this I also need this one later okay now when it comes to tangent graphs we want to be able to actually transform them okay the exercise talks about transforming them these notes come straight out of your book but I wanted to talk to them here in general if a and n are positive the graph of y equals a tan nt so this is the general form here I'm going to underline this and then move my fingers out of the way so it refocuses this is the general form of a tan graph y equals a tan nt okay that graph is a form of y equals tan t this is a dilation factor of a from the t-axis and we have a dilation factor of 1 over n from the y-axis so if you've got the general function f of t equals a tan nt so that's you could use f of t or you could use y and again we're using time instead of x the period is pi on n pi on this n and the range is all reason, real numbers okay then we also we can use this little formula here to work out where the asymptotes are okay because when you're sketching a tan graph that's really what you need to know okay you need to know the asymptotes t equals 2k plus n pi over 2n and you need to know sorry I'll just move that up and go over that again the asymptotes have the equation t equals 2k plus 1 brackets in brackets times pi over 2n where k is an integer okay so you just substitute in to want to know if you want to know where the asymptotes are substitute in 1 2 3 4 or substituting negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 and you'll get the values of where the asymptotes are and if you do the same you're substituting integers here you'll get the successive t-axis intercepts okay so you need that information to construct a tan graph so let's do an example it's probably easier if we do an example I'll have to move this down you can't quite see that yet so if we want to sketch the graph of y equals 3 tan 2x then we know what its general form is oh and we want to do it in the domain um, and we're using x instead of t this time they're interchangeable and we want to do it in the domain negative pi to pi so what we need to do when we're sketching these is the first thing we need to do is we need to say okay what is the period okay and the period equals pi over n which happens to equal pi over 2 okay so that's the first thing we need to know now if we have a period of pi over 2 that's half pi we we want to sketch the graph between negative pi and pi so the total the this total distance is uh, the domain is 2 pi wide okay because it's going from negative pi to pi if the period is half of pi and the domain is 2 pi wide that means that this graph we are going to need to sketch four periods okay this graph is is four periods when we graph it for that from in that whole domain that's an interesting thing to know okay it's an important thing to know actually so we need to know the asymptotes where are the asymptotes okay so t equals 2k plus 1 pi over 2n So when k equals 1, k 
a equals 2. We'll do those first. So t equals, well actually it's x in this case because we're using x. So we'll say x equals 2 plus 1 pi over 2. Uh, and it's 2 times n and what did we say n was? n is 2. 2 times 2. So that's k, that's n. So it's 3 pi over 4. That's one asymptote. Um, if we make k equal 2, then we have 2 times 2 plus 1 over 4 5 pi over 4 okay so and then so we've got 3 pi over 4 5 pi over 4 what that means is we're going to have an asymptote also at pi over 4 and we're going to have one at negative pi over 4 because if there's one at three, 3 pi over 4, if we add 2 pi over 4, we get 5 pi over 4, okay? And if we have one at 3 pi over 4, if we subtract pi over, uh, if we subtract 2 pi over 4, we get pi over 4, and if we subtract 2 pi over 4 from that, we get negative pi over 4. So these are our asymptotes that we need to have. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Um, and what are the t-intercepts? Or the x-intercepts in this case? Okay, and the x-intercepts are k pi over n. So it's pi on 2. and 2 pi on 2 or pi All right and so then that's 2 in the positive direction because remembering we're going to pi so then we need negative 1 so negative pi over 2 and negative pi these are our, because I've put in, if you put in negative 1 there, you get negative pi over 2. If you put in negative 2 there, you get negative 2 pi over 2, which is negative pi. So these are our x-intercepts. We've got pi on 2, pi, negative pi on 2, pi. So we have all the information we need to graph this now. So we need to graph it. This is where I get to one of these. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to use this and I'm going to change these labels here. So where are the asymptotes? We've got asymptotes at, well here's our zero, we've got an asymptote at pi on four. So this is pi on 4, and we've got another asymptote at 3 pi on 4. Okay, I don't have all of the graph here. So then if that's pi on 4, then that's 0. And we've got another x-intercept at pi on 2. So this is part of the graph, okay? This is not the whole graph. I didn't actually get set up to draw the whole graph. 
Okay, so and if I sit here in the video and draw the whole graph, um, it's probably going to take too long, and you're going to get bored watching me draw the graph. Okay, um, but there's that one there. So perhaps, actually, what I can do, I just realised I have something here I can use. That's better. Let's use this. Let's use these axes. Alright, so what did I just work out? I worked out that we want to draw four periods. And we want to know, okay, where are the x-intercepts? Yep, if I want to draw this, I have I've I just said yeah, where are my x intercepts? What I need what the, the easiest way to draw this first, I just had to have a bit of a pause there and a bit of a think about it so that I didn't get flustered making the video. Um, what you want to do first is you want to draw in the asymptotes. Okay? So I've got asymptotes that I've wanted here and I'll get my pencil. Here it is. I'm gonna draw in an asymptote there. That's pi on 4. That's pi on 2. That's 3 pi on 4. This one, I'm going to draw in here, as negative pi on 4. Okay, and this is going to be negative 3 pi on 4. So these are the asymptotes that I worked out. Now, where are my intercepts? There's one here at pi on 2. Actually, I didn't draw this one in. The thing that, that threw me, that threw me off, and which shouldn't have, but it did, was that I was sitting there thinking, well, surely there's an intercept at zero as well. Um, and there is, okay? I didn't... Of course there's an intercept at zero. So there's three intercepts there. Okay, now we want to go... This is pi. Uh, sorry, negative pi. And this is positive pi. So now I've got this set up to draw the graph. And this is where you have to just be a bit creative. And so, well, you've got one period in here. There's one. There's another one. Okay, and there's another one. Oops, sorry, no, that's not right. That's why I was using pencil. It's actually here. All right, because it, yeah, it's here. It's here. My mistake it goes to there. Now this graph is restricted. The domain is between pi and negative pi. So that's where the graph ends. Okay, and what else have we got? We've got a whole period in here like this. So let's do this. This comes in here like this. Okay, and then one more. Like this. Alright, so that's pi, put that down here, that's negative pi, we've got two halves there and then one, two, three periods, okay, I said originally that when we draw this graph we've got four periods, okay, the domain of the graph is two pi wide, um, the period of the graph is pi on two, each one of these gaps here is pi on two, 
So this is the graph of y equals 3 tan 2x. Okay, so take a good look at that there. That's the graph of y equals 3 tan 2x in the domain negative pi to pi. Okay, so if you're asked to sketch one of those, that's the sort of thing you need to sketch. So we've got the tangent graph and we've got the transformations. Now, anything else we need to do? I think what you're also asked to do is to solve equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit pause and set up an equation for you to solve. Okay, we've had a break there. So the other thing you need to do with tangents is you, you need to solve for equations. Solve for equations. Okay. So just having a quick look at these here it says solve. So in work example uh, 27, I'll go over one of them. Um, solve each of the following. So solve tan bracket 2x equals root 3, okay, and it's asking for over the domain x is an element of negative pi to pi, okay, so if you're going to solve this, you say, okay, tan 2x equals root 3, okay, so when you do this, what we'll say is we'll say, okay, um, tan of alpha, for example, equals root 3. So when does tan equal root 3? Tan equals root 3 when alpha equals pi on 3. Okay. How do I get that? Back to my standard values here. Okay. This is my these are my standard triangles. This one's here. The tangent of pi on 3 is root 3. Okay? So that comes from that table. So we've got root 3, or we've got 4 over 4 pi over 3. So what am I doing? I'm adding adding pi to this. If I'm subtracting pi from this, I get negative 2 pi over 3, and if or negative 5 pi over 3. This is the tan of 2x, okay? So tan of x equals each of these but over 6. So we've got pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, or negative 2 pi over 6, or negative 5 pi over 6. So that is pi over 6, that is 2 pi over 3. That is negative 2 pi over 6, and that is, well actually it's, it's negative pi over 3, isn't it? Or negative 5 pi over 6. Okay. They are the solutions for tan of 2x. If tan of 2x equals root 3, then the tan of x equals half of all of these values. So you find where the tangent equals root 3, and if it's the tan of 2x to solve for x, you divide all of these by 2. Okay? So there are your four possible solutions between pi and negative pi. So if you're going to write them actually in order, 
from negative pi to pi, you'd have negative 5 pi over 6, you'd have negative pi over 3, you'd have um, 2 pi, oh, what have I done? Yep, yep, that's all right. You'd have pi over 6 and 2 pi over 3. There are your four answers to that. Take a look at it. It's in the worked example. Okay, but this is in this exercise, that's what you're asked to do. You're asked to draw some graphs of the tan function and you're asked to solve some, uh, some of these little equations here. And when you're asked to solve these little equations, um, usually they're for angles that fit in with your standard triangles. Okay, and variations thereof. So I hope that helps you. And I hope that allows you to go on and uh, do the uh, do the questions. Thanks.